Ready? Just go. All right, here we go. What's up? My name is Cypher Sounds. I'm a hip hop DJ, radio personality, comedian. Even hotter, I'm the host of Hip Hop Treasures Bonus Gems, where I'll take you, the fans, behind the scenes, cut right there, beep, to find out what challenges we face as we travel the country oh. in search of hip hop's most iconic relics. See, that's what I was looking for. To bring them home to the Universal Hip Hop Museum in the Bronx. I'm Cypher Sounds, and I'm a field collector for the Universal Hip Hop Museum. I'm here with my guy, Pete Nice, co-curator of the Universal Hip Hop Museum in the Bronx. I hope you all enjoyed the Ice-T and Coolio episode of Hip Hop Treasures, because I'm about to give you some bonus gems from behind the scenes. Yo, my name is Artis Leon Ivy Jr. People call me Coolio. I got the name Coolio from one of the homies. Say, look at him. He think he Coolio Iglesias. This episode's a little hard to watch for me because remember, both of us, we were right there. Say peace to the homies. Julio, thank you, bro. Peace. Yeah, like, Bye. yo, yo went to go see him, and then we talked to him over the internet. He was doing a festival. He was at some festival in Europe, and we're like, oh, man, Julio's out there working. He's still right. getting it. Right. And he was so excited to, to, you know, talk about the artifacts and hip hop, and then and then shortly after that, he, he passed away, man. Unbelievable. So tell me about cooking. You over here with this knife, like you good. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got knife skills, but I'm gonna get up on knife. Like my specialty is making something out of nothing. I'm always going on these excursions and missions to go get artifacts. And then you watch Yo-Yo, and she's just chilling at the crib, cooking up a meal. <laughs> like, right, like, dancing. Uh, uh, uh. I used to have a crush on Yo-Yo back in the day, but we wasn't allowed to mess with Yo-Yo because she was like the little sister. I see how she gets the artifacts more than me because she's having a, just a social time with these people. No, no, this no, is no, what no. I'm looking for. No, baby girl. This right here. Do you here. know where this bike is from? This bike is from my first tour. OK. I used to ride this out on stage. That was my intro. The way West Coast culture customized their cars, people started customizing their bikes. But that 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 bike, those West Coast bikes. That bike, incredible. Man, man, I remember like he used, to, he used to have those in the videos, and then he would come out on shows with them. Man. Historic. It's not made for riding. You no, know what it's, it's made, made for? for? What is it? It's a hip-hop treasure. If it was anybody else, you know, I would say no. But because it's you... Oh! Because it's you, I'm, I'm gonna do it. She convinced him, you know, because it was... He definitely doesn't want to let it go. She got you. She got me. She, she, always, she always gets me. She always gets me. I mean, you can tell he doesn't want to let it go, but for her, he knows it's gonna go somehow, to a safe place. Somehow she did it. She got it. <laughs> I think with Coolio's passing, it shows you how important it is for us at the museum to get to the artists, yeah. to help them document their own history before they pass. Like, yeah. there are so many guys that we've lost, even so recently with Shock G, yeah. with Biz Marquee. Yeah, like, Coolio will never go to the museum, which sucks. You know what I'm saying? We didn't even know that was a possibility. You. But it shows you the urgency yeah. of, like, everybody's getting old. You know, if you want to document this history... Yeah, because... We got to get out there. The art form is literally, we say, this is the year 50. The art form is so young, but, you know, time doesn't stand still for the artist, it so... It's really, really sad, but, you know, rest in peace, Coolio. Coming up on Hip Hop Treasures Bonus Gems. Oh, wow, OK, it's my stuff made it. Yeah. That's what's up. More stories about bringing West Coast treasures to the Bronx. Yeah. Sound speed. Background. <laughs> When you talk to West Coast artists, even today, and you mention Ice-T's name, even Snoop, they light up. You know what I'm saying? You right. see it in their face, they light up. Well, he, he's like the godfather the of the West Coast. Hey, what y'all talking about? We were just talking about how we have to focus on the West Coast. Right. And then you just yeah, magically you walk in, walked Ed. in. I like Ice-T, because he, he's West Coast, and he represents the West Coast, but he doesn't limit himself to the West Coast. He respects all the coasts. He respects all hip hop culture. We're all going in the same direction, so why compete? You're gonna come in peace or leave in pieces. To have him also as a representative helping the museum, yeah. to have that 
cachet to go out there to say, yo, Ice-T is trying to bring in some of these artifacts as well, or sending you out. Send me out on missions. Yeah. And you know what? He's been living in New York for many years. Cause Jersey. He's on, yeah, Jersey. In Jersey, because he's on Law & Order, but he's still West Coast. Right. He can never be not West Coast. Yeah. He plays but, a but, New but. York detective on TV, and I still think of him as West Coast when I see him. And I also asked him how to maybe sometimes talk to the ladies, and he gave me some advice <laughs> that I cannot tell you on this show. Did he write them down for you? No, he said you're not allowed to write it down. The okay. game is to be told. You got to have some artifacts. Yeah, in you're the like game. an artifact yourself sitting right here in the chair. <laughs> My name comes from Iceberg Slim, so Ice T is short for Iceberg T. The music I write, I call it faction. It's Factual occurrences put into a fictional story. It rings true because these are all real things that happen. The crazy thing about all my cool stuff, most of my stuff got lost. You know, I can't watch that show called Storage Wars. Yeah. I lost a storage kit. Really? Listen. Why don't you pay your bills? <laughs> I had somebody who was supposed to be paying the bill. But wow. fortunately, Africa Islam is a hoarder slash a collector. And he was with me the whole ride. This is another guy who doesn't save his stuff. He tried to. I, listen, he had the story, he just lost the story. You know, when is somebody gonna catch on to this trend of like, when you have somebody else paying your storage bill, they don't pay it. Pay your storage bill, people. Yes. So he lost a lot of stuff, but obviously, Africa Islam held on to some things. Right. Check these out. Oh, come on. This picture right here yes. says so much. Oh, look but, at that. Yeah, these oh. are the original joints. So this is actually Ice-T's um, Rhyme Syndicate This jacket. is the first time there was like an actual official union of the East and West in yes, the early hip-hop days. That's correct. I mean, it represents so much, and it represents the East Coast and the West Coast together with him and Islam. Like, they're Abbott and Costello, really, of hip-hop. Yeah. He was great. He was dropping a lot of knowledge. He was telling a whole bunch of stories. They had the rhyme syndicate tour jackets. Right. The skull ones were more connected for body count. My metal band, which came out in the 90s, we put the skull in because it's heavy metal, but it's all still part of the same organization. And what I love about rhyme syndicate, right, is when you say the words East Coast and West Coast, you automatically think of the East Coast, West Coast beef, which actually wasn't a real beef. It was all this made up stuff. But you think of Biggie getting killed, you think of Tupac getting killed, but you don't realize that Ice-T was trying to create a union between the coasts. You know what I mean? Right. Under the syndicate umbrella, we agree not to just go at each other's throats. We'll sit down if there's any beef and we'll talk it out. I can imagine you being an artist from New York, and then you go out to Cali, and the sun is shining, and there's beaches, and lovely weather, and you're like, we should form like a rap union. <laughs> we should all just come together. It's so beautiful out here. And everybody in New York is like, yo, shut up! You're not doing no damn rap union. <laughs> Humble beginnings. Oh! Wow. Oh, it's that. That's the first machine we bought Where? when I got uh, the record deal. You bought the disc as well. So these are the original discs? Yeah. Yeah, there they are. Amazing. When he saw that, his, you can see his face. You know why? It's his first legit check he got right. from music, and that was the first thing he bought to make more music. Right. So that machine has a very special place in Ice-T's heart, and it's going to have a special place in the museum, I hope. We got it? Got it. And you see, like, Islam can actually put the disc in, and he can replicate exactly what's on the disc. Well, can we do that in the museum? Can we play it? Yeah, that, I mean, a lot, there's gonna be a lot of virtual and a lot of, like, interactive stuff, so that's yeah. perfect for it. Love Ice-T. He came to my birthday party. Did he give you a birthday gift? No. He let me know his presence was the gift. <laughs> <laughs> that's my dude. Thanks for watching Hip Hop Treasures Bonus Gems. I'm gonna catch y'all next time. <laughs>